So, Patrick, I assume this is a second or third or possibly fourth watch for you, but what did you think about it this time? Well, second and third, and I will say, I mean, it's good. It's it's very good. It's a stylish gangster movie, a Japanese gangster movie. It, it felt like a mix, a kind of, I mentioned the Scorsese with Tarantino style. Mm-hmm. It also felt neo noirish in, in a few ways, and I think that could be the influence of the French crime films. I don't really know. But I did find it really entertaining. I thought the main character was awesome. Yeah, it's a good performance from, uh, what, was, what was the guy's name? The One Piece guy? Oh, uh, Sugawara. Yeah, Bunta Sugawara. I thought that's a good performance by that guy. There's a lot of characters. There's a lot of shifting motivations, shifting allegiances, but it all makes sense in the moment. And it's as it plays out, it's just really interesting to see. It's just such a it's it's such an interesting depiction of a yakuza lifestyle where you trust this guy now, but tomorrow he may be your greatest enemy. And I really like that aspect of the film. And I think it pays off in a big way towards the end, obviously. It's entertaining. The violence is awesome. You get the arm severings and the blood spraying everywhere. Some of the best squibs I've seen from the 70s. And and they're so bloody. Yeah. And they just explode literally out of people oh, yeah. and cover walls. And, well, and also, also, I could be wrong, but I don't think anyone gets shot once in this movie. They all get shot like four or five, six times. There's just like, there's already, there's blood and then there's more blood. Then there's more blood on top of that. It's just amazing. Yeah, I liked, I liked the movie quite a bit. Jim, what about you? It sounds like you did as well. Yeah, I uh, I really like the story and how you kind of meet all these characters at the beginning. They're all on the same side. They all have a common goal, and that's just to to live happily and relatively peacefully and try to make some money. And then throughout this movie, you just have all these friends turning on each other, killing each other. They're just interesting characters. And again, Sugawara, I think, is such a cool actor, and he looks cool, too. I really liked his acting, and I really liked all the stuff with Wakasugi. I don't even know, like... uh, this this really was like watching an American gangster movie just set in Japan. Because you had the cars. Like, there was even a line like Yamamori, because they had so much money, they started driving around like... Oh, the foreign cars, yeah. which I thought was funny. <laughs> yeah. that, that, might mean, that might mean he's driving a Ford. But yeah, like, they're driving around these big old, like, American cars in the 50s. <laughs> I didn't, like, it was really just interesting. It was also interesting to kind of see, like, the gangster movie from the perspective of, of a Japanese filmmaker. Because this is because sure. this is like the same era as The Godfather, right? You look at that, and that's a masterpiece. It's lovely, but also this is so it's cool. overrated. I, you know, what bothers me about The Godfather? What? No one ever turns a fucking light on in that entire yeah, movie. Know, right? It's always so dark. It's like, bro, you're you're <laughs> uh, you're uh, the head of a mafia family. You're wealthy. You cheaping on the electrical bill. Turn a light on, yeah. Vito. <laughs> Yeah, but no, The Godfather. It's obviously a masterpiece. I just, I just like joking about that. It's like, uh, it's such, it's such deliberately moody lighting. But it's just like, <laughs> you know, you can just turn a light on, buddy. Like, it, like if it were like a real, if if you were to go over to Vito's house, you'd be like, uh, can we? Yeah, can we get a? I can't lamp even on? see you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know. And and then all the stuff with like you know the the Yakuza code and honor and stuff like that that came into the story. I just thought it was interesting, but I got. Because I guess I'm a bit of a weeb at heart. So maybe that's why I really liked this movie. I don't know what that means. I, I guess I'm a Japanophile at heart. Oh. I don't know. There's just something about it. I can't really put my finger on it, but I just really liked this gangster story. I liked the setting, the characters, and how bloody it was. But also, yeah. I was uh, reading something else here uh, under production. I'll read this out to you. Battles Without Honor and Humanity adapts a series of articles by journalist Koichi Iboshi that ran in Weekly Sankei, or Sankai. These were actually rewrites of a manuscript originally written by a a real-life Yakuza guy who was incarcerated in Abashiri Prison. Okay. And Abashiri Prison, that's only the second time I've heard the name of that prison, because the first time I heard it is in one of my new favorite animes called Golden Kamui. I guess the main story takes place around Abashiri prison because you have like this guy who tattoos all these prisoners with a map on how to get how to find like this lost stolen gold and then all these prisoners escape out of Abashiri prison yeah battles without honor and humanity I'm surprised uh, how much I like this uh, it's just a really cool gangster flick 
Yeah, it's a it's a very good movie. And it, well, and actually, before I move on, even the filmmaking too, like we were saying, like there's lots of really cool shots, and like I don't know, I, I, again, like going back to like these Dutch angles or just shots where like they seem super modern, where like somebody has like a baseball bat leaning against a wall, and you don't see the characters talking, and then somebody walks over and picks up the baseball bat, and the camera pans up to the character holding it, you know, like just really interesting blocking yeah i don't know it's just it's just really neat all right well there you have it battles without honor and humanity we both recommend it 